For our first example, our research question is, is there a difference in the heart rate of patients taking drug A versus drug B for high blood pressure 15 minutes following ingestion? Our dependent variable is heart rate, 15 minutes following ingestion of the drug, which is measured on a scale. The independent variable, we have two groups, those participants that took drug A or those that took drug B, they're randomly selected. Go ahead and run our analysis in SPSS, and I'm using a fictitious data set here. So you launch your SPSS, we use the Analyze tab at the top, we get the drop down menu, it goes to Compare Means, we get the sidebar menu where we select Independent Samples T-Test, we get a new window that opens up in the center, and in the test variable, which is a larger box on, on the upper, on the right hand side, we'll move across heart rate, which is our variable, and then in the grouping variables, which is down below, we actually move across, in this particular data set, they're just called groups, so we'll go ahead and move those into groups, and then we click on define groups. Now this is important, when we click on define groups, we get a, another window that opens up, which shows that this is where we'll actually pick our two groups for the analysis. When you have your SPSS data set, you may have two groups only that you're working with and they're coded one and two, or in my particular data set, I've got three groups coded, one, two, and three, or you could have however many uh, different groups in your data set, so you're just working with one large data set. And if you just want to do individual comparisons, you have to remember and go back and look into the variable view to determine which how the groups are actually coded. For this first example, the participants which received drug A were coded as numeric, they were just coded as one, and those that were um, given drug B were coded as two. So for my group one, I'm going to put in one, and for my group two, I'm going to put in two. But if, as we'll see in the next example, we're actually going to use a different numerical value for the comparison. At this point, we'll click on continue and then we'll click on the OK button. And as most of you are probably familiar, SPSS puts out numerous tables and, and lots of information. Um, the first table that we look at is the group statistics. And the group statistics here, we have drug A and drug B, right? Because I coded them, I put in you know group one and group two. The sample size for each group is 15. Uh, it's not necessary that the Sample sizes are equal. They just happen to be equal in my particular data set. We can actually see what the the mean value is for for drug group A and also the mean value for drug group B. And this is important to take a look at as well. So we look for A, we've got 107.4, and then we get our standard deviation, standard error of the mean. And for drug uh, for group that got drug B, their mean value is 110. essentially 9. Now we know that we can see that the mean value for you know drug B is higher than that of drug A, but the question is, is there overlap essentially of the uh, confidence intervals? The next table that we look at is, is titled Independent Samples T Test, and what we're going to look at here this gives us um, our analysis, and one thing to consider and this is sometimes confusing to, to students, is the Levine's test for equality of variances, which is um, the first thing that we actually see on the left-hand side. Levine's test is an inferential statistical test used to assess the equality of the variances for variable calculating um, for two or more groups. And so we'll see this with all the test of means analysis. Um, you know, some common statistical procedures assume that the variances of the populations from which the samples are drawn are actually equal. Now, Levine's test assesses this assumption. It tests the null hypothesis that the population variances are equal. This is also known as the homogeneity of variances or the homocedacity. So remember, the null hypothesis is that there's equal variances or, or the, um, the null hypothesis that the population variances are equal. Uh, when we look at this, we actually have two rows of, of numbers. So to figure out which row to read from, 
we look at the column labeled Levine's test of equality of variances, and then you'll find that um, you'll see two smaller columns labeled F and SIG, and the SIG represents our p-value. So look at the, the SIG column. That will only have one value, right? You'll use this value to determine which row to read from. In this example, the SIG value column is 0.785 when since you rounded to three uh, decimal places. So if the SIG value is greater than 0.05, which we have here, then we read from the top row, right? That equal variances are assumed. Um, a value greater than 0.05, right, means that the variability in your two conditions is about the same that the scores in one condition do not vary too much from the scores in the second condition. Uh, in other words, it means that the variability in the two conditions is not significantly different. This is a good thing, right? And in this example, since um, our sig value is greater than 0.05, we read from the top row. So we're going to retain the null hypothesis that the variances are not different. If the sig value were less than 0.05, we would use equal variances not assumed which would be the alternative hypothesis. As we move across, when we uh, cross our table and we see the t-test for equality of means, we can actually see there's a sig two-tail. And in this case, we can see that our sig two-tail value is um, 0.679, which is greater than 0.05, meaning that this is non, not statistically significant, that we're going to uh, retain the null hypothesis that we're going to reject the alternative hypothesis that the means are different. And we're going to retain the null that there is no difference in the in the means. When we look at the mean difference, it's negative 3.47, essentially 3.47. And if we look at the 95% confidence interval, the lower and the upper, those represent the confidence interval of the mean difference. And if we see that the lower value is negative 20 and the upper is 13, we can see that the confidence interval includes the value of 0. So somewhere between the confidence intervals of the two groups, when we subtract them, it includes the value of 0, which relates back to why our p-value, our sig value here, is greater than 0 0.05. So we're going to uh, retain our null hypothesis and reject the alternative. So you've got to put this on your in your paper. So here's a just an example of an APA style write-up, right, for the independent samples t-test, and it reads: the results of the independent samples t-test show that the mean heart rate after 15 minutes between patients taking drug A, where we have our mean equals 107.40, with a standard deviation of 23.38, with a sample size of n equals 15, and patients taking drug B, where the mean value is 110. 0.87, standard deviation of 21.95, sample size equals n equals 15, was not statistically significant at the 0.05 level of significance, right? We have a t-statistic of 28 equaling negative 0 0.419, degrees of freedom equal 28, and the p-value is greater than 0.05. Remember, the sig value is the, is the p-value. On average, heart rate after 15 minutes between patients taking drug A and those taking drug B were approximately the same. The null hypothesis, which suggests that there was no significant difference in the mean heart rate after 15 minutes between patients taking drug A and those taking drug B cannot be rejected. So from our analysis, the APA style write-up takes the information that you need and you also provide an actual summary of your findings.